Welcome to hour number two on a Monday with Hashtag Daily K's host, Peter Bitt. Tired of just scratching the surface of Korea? Want to get deep in the weeds? We unpack everything about Korea through its history on Now and Then with David. That's right, we've got our professor, our one and only professor, I'm pretty confident saying that, on the show. On a Monday, David Tizard is here to tell us about various parts of Korean history linked to sometimes everyday events. I guess we could link it to our weekend uh, socialising this time around. But as Ooh. well as that, you've got so many strings to your bow, David, because I was listening to my uh, YouTube music playlist. I got it on shuffle. And Radical Gary came on. <laughs> I love it. Seriously. Is that a project that's kind of just was a one-off and it's not coming back? It was during COVID. Uh-huh. It was during the pandemic. And I decided, you know, I, I, I've never been a vocalist. Let's do something. Yeah. I'm really glad I did it. And like you say, there'll, there'll be a time it will just come on and go, oh, yeah, I did that. I yeah. like having done things. And to, ha- to be able to have done things, you actually have to do them. This is o- true. Overcome the fears. And so, <laughs> you know, I'm onto a different musical project uh, at the moment. But what I've learned is that, you know, these things never go away. Yeah. It's nice to have done them. So I'm glad your, your playlist worked. I love it. If you haven't listened to it, listeners, and you weren't tuned in at the time, <laughs> check out Radical Gary on YouTube. That, no, that track is like really meaningful. It's the really long one. Uh, uh, decency, the racist one. Yes. The one about racism. Yeah. Yes. I really I did that. one about racism. I did one about uh, my addictions and uh-huh. problems. And I, I did one about... Um, going to clubs and taking various kind of disco biscuits and narcotics. Oh. So, but they were all like explorations of yeah. different parts of my uh, memory and things like that. So they're all very personal. But I- I'm glad you found some enjoyment in it. They're, they're unique, aren't they? They really are. Yeah. No, and I really enjoyed it and the social message in it as well. Siska yeah. says, good morning, Professor David. Love your outfit today. Yeah, David has so many, like I said, strings to his bow. Sometimes he'll come in like a proper stereotypical professor with a lovely jacket. Sometimes he'll be looking super cool. You You inspired me to buy a denim jacket because I remember you wore one about a year ago and I've never taken it out of the closet. And you've even got sunnies today. Amazing. I I do double denim a lot. You know, I've done triple denim recently. Wow. With a denim shirt. I've got a denim shirt and then this and then the jeans. I need to have the bravery to take it out of the closet. You see me. I've I've been doing the green trousers, the red. I've got a pair of white that I'm going to bust out soon. Oh, I love white trousers. Yeah, yeah, Get some coffee on it. It's a pretty pretty difficult task to pull it off. Um, So today's topic, I haven't flat outright said it, but I'm sure many of our listeners have guessed when I talk about something famous to do with careers, architecture, home. Mm. and history what are we going to take a deep dive into we're going to take a deep dive into hanoks or Ooh. traditional korean homes mm-hmm. now winston churchill once said that we shape our homes and then our homes shape us oh. which i think is very true you yes. know you try to imbue your surroundings with personality mm. but i also want us to consider the idea this morning that The environment in which we live shapes us in in many different ways. And for the last, let's say, 50 years, Mm -hmm. Koreans are now, Korean people are now living in environments and houses that they never used to live in before. Very different, right? Incredibly. And so it's gone from Hanoks and traditional housing to essentially, I say this with the greatest uh, respect and disrespect, (laughs) living in a box. Yes. Now people live in apartments (laughs) and you have walls on four sides Mm -hmm. and... And that's kind of it. Some of them are underground. They've made the news recently and they were sort of in the Parasite movie, our listeners. But I I want us to consider how our homes and our environments shape us, shape our personalities, shape our worldview and our perspectives. And should we really be living in these sort of hyper-individualized individual apartments that that sort of are removed from nature in a way? Sure, yeah, the... the difference between an apartment like a 40 50 floor apartment tower and a hanok i don't know if it could be more stark right it'd be difficult to try and Mm. design something more opposite which is yeah unbelievable how short a time period we've completely shifted you've seen photos of my place in seoul haven't you 
that you no no, no I'll, I'll show you during the break I might bring it up on the screen oh. but I, I'm lucky I get to live in a house around trees and flowers in Seoul uh, and unbelievable I know let's start the topic of Hanoks because you and I were at a Hanok yes on Saturday yes I told our listeners because we're so into Daily K we went out on a field trip which is completely <laughs> untrue we were there as many of our listeners know they were congratulating Lena even today for her wedding and it was in the most beautiful surrounding Ooh. we got a photo is this did it's you my take photo it? yeah <laughs> Yes, look at that. We were there, and uh, and what you'll notice about this is the mountains surrounding it. You can just get a bit of the tiled roofs. Mm-hmm. I, I was trying to take just an artistic shot rather than get the actual <laughs> hanok, but you know this is inside a hanok's grounds mm-hmm. where you have the the house and nature together. And and we were there, and it was a beautiful place. This hanok wasn't it? It is the most stunning place I think I've seen a wedding in Korea, to be honest, because it was so lovely. The hanok side of things, and this isn't your average hanok. You know, you're not going to have grounds. this big and this well like kept it was stunning it's the actual furniture museum of korea so you can go and visit you don't mm. have to go and take in a wedding or anything uh, and it's located what behind like samcheongdong and k y o n g g u k palace it's and, on like, the embassy back. road isn't it the, yeah. the road where all the embassies are so it's a very affluent part of town way up in the hills above seoul mm. um But it was it was really nice to be in and around that environment, just in a hanok. I feel really sorry for the next person that gets married <laughs> because if they're competing with that environment, wow, that's something. Getting married in a in an environment of a hanok like that. Yeah, even I guess the wedding venues have changed. akin to how we've gone into apartments we've gone into like wedding factories basically these k y o r o n s h i k j a n g s inside buildings where you have one taking place on the first floor the second floor the third floor have, have you explained that signs. to the listeners in some detail because it's very unique here the wedding system yeah I think we'll have to do a whole episode on mm. that right because that can't part of Korean culture and how much that's changed is, is unbelievable uh, so in terms of Hanok's you can see by that photo they still exist right yep. you can find them but Just not as easily as before. In a recent, uh, the Institute of Architectural Spaces, they did, uh, they do a survey every three to four years, and they reckon there's about 85,000 Hanoks left in the country. 85,000. 85,000, okay. which of a country of 50 million <laughs> isn't many. No. Um, they say that around 6,600 are in uh, city areas. Okay, so, so that's very that's few. Seven percent, eight percent are in the cities like the ones that we went to. Ninety-two uh-huh. percent are in the provinces and you'll find the most in c h o l a n a m d o Okay. So you rarely find, what we learn from this is the number of Hanoks is decreasing, mm-hmm. these traditional houses, that they're rarely found in cities and that they're rarely found in Seoul. So we yeah. had a very special, special event. Absolutely, because mm. this is not including like modern houses right no, no separate from apartments this is hanoks that we're talking about uh, and i get i guess you could build a modern hanok and then that, that would fall under this category but not too many people are perhaps opting to do that i, I will tell you one person that is maybe you might know the person Ooh. that is opting to build these hanoks so what is a hanok so if you take the the words hanok and you mm-hmm. even use the chinese characters it, it just means Korean house. Oh, the Han from like Hangul. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I was looking at all the Hanja and trying to get that. And yeah. it just means <laughs> Korean house. They're Korean. Uh, we'll show you a photo of one of what they look like. They normally have a courtyard mm. inside. They were first designed, built in the 14th century. So around 1500. Yeah. This is um, 1300. This is around the time where the Joseon dynasty uh-huh. is flourishing. That okay. brings in Confucianism. That brings in the Korean language. And the people would start living in places like this with various rooms centered around a courtyard. That's one of the big things of a hanok. You yeah. can see there that there's a courtyard in the middle. It's open to nature. There's no roof over the courtyard, but mm. there'll be various rooms about. And those rooms will uh, give social rank and position in the family and such forth. Yeah, I, I heard someone describe it like a t i g u t Like if you're thinking of the Korean alphabet, mm, it's mm, like mm, that mm. kind of square without one side. And then in the middle, you've got the courtyard. And then that would help with things like 
wind going through the rooms yeah, so you wouldn't yeah. need air conditioners and stuff like this and it's kind of cool isn't it because i guess your kind of hall or corridor is outdoors basically getting between the rooms whereas in a traditional like british i don't know manor or house or something everything's indoors i mean you've got a garden and stuff outside yeah but... th- they are very different and that it's an enclosed space but it still allows nature yeah. it's very good and and that's one of the things that i think modern life is losing mm. another really important feature we'll try to show a picture and that is of the handy and so in a hanok like that there will be no glass but rather there will be this paper windows so yes. this is the this is the paper the windows and they allow things to breathe mm-hmm. so glass is very rigid sure. right? it stays there and it it reflects heat and it prevents cold and these things but the paper breathes and this handy it's called has to be replaced every so often but mm-hmm. In in real good hanoks, you don't see any glass, apart from the ones that you drink out of, but even then you might be using sort of (laughs) traditional Korean cups. But in a real hanok, there is no glass. It's just these natural woods and papers. Yeah, so if you want to, like, see outside, when I first kind of thought about that, I was like, oh, wasn't that a bit claustrophobic? But it's not, because it lets in light a lot. And then if you open the actual window frame, then you get Mm. completely access to nature. There's nothing blocking it. And I remember in the 80s when I came to apartments, like my auntie and uncle, they'd have, like, of course, glass for the outside windows, Mm. but inside they'd have the sliding doors with the hanji. And I often accidentally put my finger through it and got an (laughs) earful. Uh, But it did look beautiful, to be honest. Yeah, it is, like you said, living and breathing almost. Welcome to Arirang Radio. If you are in Jeju, 88.7 in Jeju City, 88.1 in Sogipu City, 101.9 in the Daejeong area. We're back for part two now and then with David in the studio talking all about Hanox, just scratching the surface so far, but going to get deeper into it. Donna in New York, who is married to uh, your husband's Kareen, you've told us, says Hubs used to live in a Hanok when he was younger, but he doesn't remember exactly where it was. And then when I've come to Korea with him, I've visited Pukchon Hanok village mm. and the Namsangol Hanok village as well. Yeah, that's like David was saying, just maybe four or five decades ago, there were many Hanoks and many people, including my mum. Yeah, she grew up in a Hanok yep. and actually a couple of Hanoks together. She was very proud in Pyeongtaek that her dad was a doctor. They owned quite a bit of land. And then it's all gone to pot and now it's all been redeveloped and it's no longer their land. She really says she misses that as well. Like having that kind of courtyard and people drop by and just yeah. shout out to you. Hey, yeah. how you doing? can't do that if you're living on the 18th floor of an apartment, right? You're walking by, hey, Peter, you're never going to hear that, are you? No, and so that's what I said about how we shape our homes, but our homes shape us. What mm. effect is this is, is this living having? I like that name, though, Donner in New York. It sounds like, <laughs> sounds like a play or a movie yes, or something to me. It's very a series on the it, flicks. It's evocative <laughs> of something, yeah. Siska Adriati says, Hanok, love the architecture of Hanok houses. And traditional architecture is always interesting because they're more complicated in design and the building. Yes, Siska, mm. you're exactly right. However, on the flip side, and we've got to, got to keep flipping it, yep. um, Breaker, am I pronouncing yes. that correctly? I wouldn't like a house where you have to keep going outside to another room, especially in winter. I suppose in the winter, yeah, that might have been very... You'd probably just be tempted to not leave the room the whole day. Get a bit chilly on the outside. You know, this is where modernity, time and space doesn't matter to us anymore. (laughs) In modern society, we're not affected by time. It doesn't matter what season Mm -hmm. it is. Our inside environment is controlled. Um, We can access anything we want. Pineapples any time of the year, strawberries. When you live in a hanok and you live around winter, you live your life according to the seasons. You know when the seasons are. And so then you live in with the rhythm of the earth, Pete. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? You don't live by the rhythm of a digital clock. Yeah, and our bodies have evolved with that, right? Living to the earth's rhythm. Circadian rhythm we have. Do you know what you're meant to do in the morning according to the science? When you wake up, you're meant to sort of have the sun on you or look at the sun yes. for a few minutes yeah. rather than screens. And that really does help. So you shouldn't just lay in bed, right? Open
open your curtains as soon as possible. Even the glass light filters out some of that light. I, I really love doing that. And that sets your sleep rhythm. So yeah. it helps you sleep at night, despite it being the morning. I've heard that. We're quite similar. That's quite good that we're on the same page yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah I yeah. like it. Get nice. these smartphones out of our faces. Give me a Hanok. Um... What are we going to look at next? Let me show you. Let's go through two people. The okay. first one here is Peter Bartholomew. He recently passed away. He uh-huh. was one of the most important members of the Royal Asiatic Society, oh. Korea branch. And he was known as the blue-eyed guardian of the Hanok <laughs> because he loved Hanoks so much. And now this is what Peter Bartholomew said about Hanoks. There he is in his Hanok. You can see him there wow. on the screen. He, he said, lived here. Yes, he <sighs> did. And, but he also wanted other people to keep their Hanok. Mm. And he did so much work on them. Peter Bartholomew said that everyone who enters a Hanok, whether it be a foreigner or a Korean, says their mind is at peace. Mm. Hanok puts your mind at ease and improves your health. So for him, it was about the spirituality. It was about the health. It was about the way of life. And uh, yeah, he was he was a big believer in them. They, they really do like. Even not just Hanoks, but I recently went down to Tongyong and was at some old, like, not a palace, but it was an old wooden structure, you know, traditional Korean style. Mm. You just go in and you feel more relaxed, more at ease. There's the space, there's the air, there's everything. There's not too many digital devices there. Yeah. I, I didn't really consciously think about that, but it does put your mind at peace. Maybe you're thinking, oh, that's a load of rubbish. But no, it really has that effect on you. If you sit in a beautiful park, it's different from if you yeah. sit in an office. It, it absolutely is. And so that's what I'm trying to get to people. Manage your environments. It's hard. Mm. But this, if you are interested in Hanoks, by the way, just go to YouTube and type Hanok and then type Peter Bartholomew. And you, there's Ari Rang's got hour long interviews oh, with him wow. and everything. He's, he's, got, he's done so much and he does it in English and Korean. and fluently and uh-huh. uh, really good. Let me introduce one more person, which is Daniel Tandler. Mm-hmm. He's a half Korean, half German architect. And he won an award for designing Hanok of the Year 2021. He said this, Daniel Tandler said this about Hanoks. He said, it's the accumulation of centuries of culture, of history, of building techniques that were built up during time, and it reflects Korea and its traditional values. Hanok are a cultural asset, and they reflect everything that Korean people are. Wow. He really believes in Hanoks, and his Hanok that he designed and built won Hanok of the Year 2021. We've got... Four pictures of this Hanok, if you'd like to see them. Is this one of them? This is Unpyeong Hanok. These are all the same Hanok. So Uh this is the first picture. And uh, I'm not sure if we'll show the others, but this is what a modern Hanok can look like. So it's a little bit smaller because living in Seoul is is like that. And you can see it's got a proper front door if you look at the (laughs) right-hand side of the photo, (laughs) which is not like Hanoks in the past. They just used to have the main gate into the courtyard and whatnot. Yeah, Umpyong, they've got that Hanok Mao now, that new Hanok Mm -hmm, village there. mm -hmm. I heard the prices are pretty astronomical because, yeah, I guess living in an apartment, you're all sharing technically the same land on the bottom, so it makes it a bit cheaper, although apartments are by no means cheap in Seoul. But for these kind of places nowadays, oh, wow, look how modern it is inside. Yeah. With the traditional wood, though, as well. With the traditional wood. So it, it, it's kind of fusion style, they would call it, but it retains most of the elements. And I think it's just about that idea of having a little bit of garden and greenery outside and yeah. sort of acknowledging nature, wow. as well as having your own private space as much as possible. I would love to live in a Hanok. And did, did you ever know Annabelle, the British girl who was like on Misuda uh, the show where a lot of foreign ladies got. I know the show but no I didn't I don't know her she Sorry. had this dream of living in a Hanok and mm. I think she got one in one of the Hanok Mals in Seoul wow and I, I can't remember maybe it's my mind playing tricks on me I think at the end it was like oh, it's a, a lot of maintenance actually you know to keep <laughs> it up because that's why a lot yeah. of Koreans do prefer apartments is they're like it's no headache then if something goes wrong you call the Ajashi you know and he'll come up and fix things and then there's no bugs and Blah blah blah, but I'm sure there's no, bug, can... there's no mosquitoes, or I, well, there... I, everyone's complaining. I see online. There, there are lots these. of mosquitoes in my apartment as well. You're right, and there are sometimes cockroaches. But they think, you know, because we haven't lived in houses for maybe a generation or two, there's just going to be loads of wildlife affecting your life and things like that. I haven't seen any mosquitoes this season, and I've wow. seen everyone complaining. And I live around mountains and trees, and wow. I thought I think it's because maybe the spiders get them. Oh, so that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's the lack of. other nature that that doesn't you know there's defense systems all right um 
Let's talk about p e s a n Imsu. Now, most of these hanoks, when they were designed, they were built according to feng shui mm-hmm. or geomancy. And it was very important when they were designed that there would be a mountain to the rear, the p e s a n and there would be water in front, the uh-huh. Imsu. Those are the characters that designed it. And so this was done, you know, so that the back of the mountain would provide protection. Okay. That would be there. The water would be in front. Uh, on the picture, you're seeing a very modern looking house. I'm sorry for the <laughs> clip art. That's meant to be a hanok. But I wanted to try to show people ah. this is how the hanoks were designed. And if it was in that kind of environment, they were built in such a way that even if there was a typhoon outside or whatever the weather conditions, a breaker was wondering about the winter, yeah. it would create a natural environment. It's like how, I guess, you know, uh, people live in igloos and still survive. Ah, that's very interesting. Because yeah, if you look at like Gyeongbokgung Palace and the Blue House, they're built with the mountain behind them as well, yeah. you know, yeah. in terms of that geomancy and stuff. And I've heard this, I'm not sure if it's linked to today's topic too, much but like with the direction of your bed yes that's linked more to i think the way that dead people used to be buried you don't want to be sleeping in the same like direction as in north south east and west i can't remember which one it is not but... meant to have your head when people open the door and see uh, into the bedroom there's, uh-huh. there's lots of different things with the feng shui isn't there yeah when we were setting up our furniture the, for the first time in korea i had such a headache because i was told no this is not okay that's not okay <laughs> it took forever Every day is K-pop. Listen up. Anytime and everywhere. Adidas Radio. Adidas Radio. Steve says, I've been to Andong, Hanok Village, and the one in Bukchon as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, Andong is proper like traditional and old, and mm-hmm. they've still got a family mm-hmm. clan living there from hundreds of years ago, many generations. Uh, and Donna from New York <laughs> says, I love the Hanoks that we see in Saguks, the historical dramas as well. I think a lot of those are often from folk villages and places like this, which are used as filming venues. If yeah. they're like proper old Hanoks, right? Absolutely. And, and so I'm trying to show you, you know, you see those old ones and you see them preserved in villages, but how they still exist in society mm. and what's happening with them. Siska Adriani, I love the way you share these messages saying, I stayed at a Hanok guest house when I was in Korea around j o n g n o It was such a nice experience. And Siska studied architecture in uni, Ooh. but didn't learn about traditional buildings. Well, Siska, you're back at school now, and I am Dr. Tizard. There you go. He's your <laughs> professor for today. That's interesting, right? When you study architecture, I guess a lot of it is focused on modern buildings and skyscrapers and whatnot. Mm. Surely there should be some history modules in there, at least. Probably depends who your professor is. I'm sure yeah. if, if you had Peter Bartholomew, <laughs> you would be learning all about those. Now, we should... Briefly touch on, I'm sure our listeners know about this, but the Ondol system of of the Hanok. Yeah, we had Siska and I think Steve talking about that underfloor heating. Yeah, yeah. so this is well known, so I won't stay on it too long, but the Ondol heating, this idea that you would warm the house up from underneath and then people would sleep on the floor. You wouldn't Mm -hmm. have beds, but you would lay down, you would put your mats out in the evening and there you would sleep. And it's like being in a sauna, right? I couldn't believe heated floors when I first came to Korea. It amazed me. And I came to Korea in late November, early December. So it was very cold. Ah, Korean winters are cold. Yes. And, and so what I learned to do is I would put my socks on the floor. Uh-huh. So when I woke up in the morning, I could have warm socks They'd to put on. They'd be toasty. Yeah, oh. they would. But this was the, the heating system of the Hanok. And so what it was is it, it gave you heat. on the bottom, but then fresh air with the hanji and the paper blowing at the top. So Mm. it was meant to be very... You would get this great circulation throughout the house. Yeah, and then this picture that you're seeing of a traditional hanok, because apartments have ondo, but it's, of course, not done by a wood fire or anything. No, no, no. You do the cooking with that fire and then use the heat to heat the house, which is such a brilliant idea. And you wouldn't get fumes because this would all be, like, under the floor. It, sometimes you'd get a leak and there'd be yeah, terrible disasters. Yeah. But the chimney would be outside on the other side of the house, as you can see here. I think Korea, like, bigs it up sometimes. K... underfloor heating is the next big thing. But they should do. They should do something. It's a very nice way to live. So I'm sure listeners know about the ondol, mm-hmm. but what about the j u y o n and the hyunpan? The what? The, exactly. <laughs> and again, thank you to Peter Bartholomew for explaining these things. Mm. In the hanoks, when they build them, 
the owner would often ask the architect or an artist, an artisan, a friend yeah. to create a series. They will create the name of the house, the oh. name of the hanok, but they will also put poetry and philosophy. So like the j u y o n is uh, a vertical one. Yeah. You might see them on, on wood rafters. It will be a vertical handa. Yes. And they might have... Uh, Philosophical phrases uh-huh. or poetry. Is that what they are? Yeah, and the hyunpan is the horizontal one, and, mm-hmm. and this will go across. We'll show you a photo, listeners, of what it looks like. And now these are trying to imbue the house with a personal philosophy or mood. Wow. They're trying to show you that the house is not just about utility. Mm-hmm. It's not just about living and eating and sleeping, but rather you're trying to create a... an atmosphere, a wow. feeling in there. And this was done in all the Hanoks through poetry, philosophy, classical literature. It's wow. quite interesting to think that, that you would have to choose something which yeah. would define your house. That's lovely. It makes it way more personal than 1,802 hole in Bidong or something <laughs> like that in Korea. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll see those over the buildings in the palaces and stuff. Yep. And each palace building will have a different name. Yep. And we went to one dedicated to like Yi Sun Shin, which was Se Byongguan. And I learned mm-hmm. that Se was like wash and then Byong was weapons. Mm-hmm. It's a place to wash the blood off weapons because it was wishing for peace, mm-hmm. which was a really interesting... Meaning. I think we should do this, even with our apartments. Okay, it doesn't look as nice, but it would be nice to have like a kind of philosophy to your house. Imagine you had to choose one, Pete. Yeah. That's interesting because we never think about it. I think some of us are too far removed. We think about utility. We mm. think about modern living, clean aesthetics. But how do we want to live? What do we want to live? That's, Hanoks all had that. Another thing that all Hanoks had mm-hmm. is, the, is the kiwa or the kiwa dip. And ah. this, these are the rooftops. And this is what we associate with the Hanoks, those tiled roofs. Yes. And, and that's, you know, all the photos you see of Hanoks, they will focus on them. Yeah. And these, these rooftops, they symbolize the Hanok in many ways, but they also symbolize social class so oh. if you lived in a house with a tiled roof mm-hmm. like you can see that meant that you were you were upper class uh-huh. you had some money because the provincial commoners like yeah. the slaves <laughs> and in those societies they would live in straw houses they yeah. would live in completely different they didn't have a tiled roof yeah you wouldn't associate that with a hanok these days but that was probably what the majority of people lived in back in the day right the straw thatched kind of roofs yeah, yeah. and so these tiled roofs symbolized affluence and they stood out across the countryside and you would see them there yeah and sometimes the ends of the tiles also have some like hancha or chinese yes. characters yeah. on them and the, the corners are very important and might have maybe like the korean equivalent of a small gargoyle like sitting on the top or something i think to ward away evil spirits and things like that and mainly they were black color mm. um where the high rank but you also had them in blue so that the, the colors would also symbolize different things now hanok this this traditional korean house the word hanok first appeared in 1907. Oh, before the, that didn't exist, the, the word. word. The word Hanok, which people, if you ask about a Hanok today, they'll say a traditional Korean house. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. And so if you lived during that time, it wouldn't be a traditional Korean house. Well, that's it, true. It'd so just it was be a just house, a, wouldn't it? A jetek or uh-huh. a juga. Uh-huh. So we have like a sateks and jeteks. It, mm-hmm. That's how they were described. Hanok first appeared in 1907 in a paper, uh. but it didn't enter... the dictionary, the the Samsung Korean dictionary, until 1975. Wow. 1975, Hanok enters that dictionary, and it's used as an antonym Mm -hmm. for um, the opposite of a Western house. Ah. So when you see that sort of, you know, the Western with a door and the windows and the roof, the opposite of that is a Hanok, a Korean house or a traditional Korean house. Well, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because when everything was a Hanok, you wouldn't have to distinguish it from anything else. And then when things change, and especially in this day and age when we've got so many apartments and whatnot. But it's just interesting that the word Hanok, we project it into the past, but it's a new word for Mm. an old thing. So it can be kind of... (laughs) 
anachronistic. That's yeah. when we see things out of time, outside mm. of chronos time. Yeah. So Hanok is relatively new linguistically. Wow. Yeah. You might think when you say that, oh, they were saying that hundreds of years ago. No, But no it's, it's a new all. word on our lips, <laughs> right? And that's why I think those philosophy, those poetry, those old words are important because mm. then we're continuing the words that were said hundreds of years ago. Yeah. But let's think about the MZ generation today. Hanoks are emerging as a hot spot. I uh, will show you a photo of something. Um, and this is how they're sort of arriving these days. It's hard to have a big hanok and a mm-hmm. courtyard in, in modern Seoul, but there's a great desire for them amongst the youth. And many people have not lived in hanoks anymore. No. You, you have these memories. And Pete, let's be honest, mm-hmm. you're a bit older yes. <laughs> than those in their <laughs> teens and 20s. Um, but nevertheless, for those that didn't live in them, they still, they have this pull, they have this romantic uh, feel to them that attracts many people. A lot of them are just used now as designs for buildings that are built with restaurants in mind or even yes. I've seen convenience stores and coffee shops train in stations as well. are like there's a couple of train stations like it as well yeah, yeah with the roofing and stuff like that to kind of show I've seen bus stops as well have been designed like that with a tiny little like Hunnock roof over them uh, they are desirable aren't they And it's, it's really nice that they are, because in the 1960s and 1970s, there was this huge move, I'm sure our listeners know, and you do, Pete, mm-hmm. to m o d e r n i z e Korea. Sure. And that meant demolishing most of the hanoks that existed. And, and that's what happened. And now South Korea is full of these high-rise apartments. Mm. And now, decades down the line, people are saying... hang on, those Hanoks were quite cool. <laughs> let's, let's try to get some. And so I think one of the lessons that we learned, two lessons just to try to recap today, mm. one is that our home shapes us. Yeah. How we live and where we live has an effect on us. And we might all live in different conditions, financially, socioeconomically, but we can imbue it. with with ourselves and we can put philosophy and poetry Mm. into wherever we live and and so try to do that the second thing is don't be quick so quick to change because you don't (laughs) know what you've got until it's gone and korea now wishes probably it had many of those hanoks that it destroyed during the 1960s and 70s because they were seen as old-fashioned yeah and now retro is cool again the modernization that rapid modernization obviously had many benefits pulling the economy so high so quickly but like the uk we have so many old houses right because Mm. we develop much more slowly which sometimes i thought was quite negative but it's lovely to have that whole range of like georgian victorian edwardian houses even on one street for instance sound like my kids (laughs) (laughs) Uh, thank you so much david for coming in as ever on a monday we'll see you again next week see you next week thank you very much everybody You can listen to Monday's segment now and then with David Tizard every Monday from 10am KST on Hashtag Daily Cake.